So back to seduction. Any creatives in the room? Quite a few. Excellent. What we do is all about seduction. That's what we really enjoy. We like creating the big idea. Seduction is really a part of what we try to achieve as brand marketers, where we're actually trying to create that big idea that draws as many people as possible around it. We saw some great examples throughout the week of that. Now, there's a perception that direct mail can be boring, right? It's all those plain envelopes that I get in the mailbox, and it's terrible stuff. Maybe the problem is just that we lack, as an industry, uh, uh, the creativity to create some stuff. So I said, Let, let's look at what's being done around the world, and maybe we'll learn a few things at the same time. So let's take a look at a few examples. Now, here's a piece. that uh, It's actually a Canadian piece, and it, it's actually by my agency, so I kind of think it's cool. Um, this is for Armani uh, uh, Attitude by Giorgio Armani. Does anyone wear Attitude? We have at least one or two people in the room. That's great. That happens to be my favorite fragrance. I wear it because my wife thinks I smell good when I wear it, which is a good thing, and she forgives me for not taking out the garbage if I do smell good, which is a good thing. Now, this is a simple piece. It's a self-mailer, and it's sent out to high-end uh, potential customers, and it contains a couple of very interesting things. Now, there's some very seductive imagery over here, of course, and we have this great product uh, the, the shape of the bottle is like a Zippo lighter, so guys kind of think it's really cool because you can flip it open and close. Everyone knows the power of a Zippo, right? So we have some black and white imagery. We got some colors, a little copy over here. And then in the center, you have a flat spray sample. So you know how it is when you're trying out a fragrance? You get inserts in magazines, right? And you pull open those tabs, and then you kind of, hmm. This, what's this going to smell like when I put it on my skin? So you tear it out and you kind of rub it on your skin. Has anyone ever done that? Right. And we try and see because we know that the, the body chemistry actually affects how the fragrance will smell on you. The problem is with those inserts, uh, you end up smelling like ink and paper more than the actual fragrance itself. Right? It's not very effective. Whereas this is an actual atomizer that contains a small fraction of the fragrance that you could actually tear off the page and spray onto your skin so you can actually wear it, which is kind of neat. So you've got multiple senses involved. You've got the sense of sight and sense of touch, and you can feel the spray as it lands on your skin, and you can actually hear the spray as it comes out of the thing, and it actually smells nice. So you've, you've covered four of the five senses, and then you can obviously add in taste if you wanted to taste the fragrance for some reason that I wouldn't understand. It probably doesn't taste that great after all. So, and then you have this thing over here, which is essentially a coupon that's laminated, so we call it a gift card, right? It's all about seduction. This combination of senses plus the involvement devices, getting people to play around with the piece itself, the spray sample, the interaction, the pushing it onto your skin, and then peeling off the card, putting it into your wallet, and taking it with you to the store. That's all about involvement. And a physical piece will allow you to do that in a very meaningful and effective way. So you have to keep those two things in mind. And we'll see a whole bunch of other examples that combine those two very important things, which are sensual uh, involvement and uh, interaction and involvement devices. So very quickly, a couple of other ones. Uh, who's to say, I'm sure everyone was thinking about, hmm, yeah, but what about taste? Well, here's a great example of edible mail. This is a publishing company in Germany that put together an edible cookbook. It's imprinted on, a sheet, uh, on sheets of pasta, and it was sent out. This is a publishing company that specializes in high-end um, uh, cookbooks. So they sent this piece out to their bookstore customers to talk about the line of products that they have and how great it is. And they sent it out. Sheets of pasta that you, with the recipe, you add some uh, sauce, you add some cheese, put it in the oven, and lo and behold, you have a lasagna, which is kind of neat because all of a sudden you've got ed edible mail. This other piece from India is for newlyweds. It's by an insurance company. Now, life insurance is a boring thing, right? You get married, you need insurance because you have responsibilities and whatever. So they dress this up quite nicely. This is made to look like a traditional uh, wedding invitation. And when you open it up, there's a sound chip that plays Vedic mantras, well-known Vedic mantras that are played during the ceremony and so on. And so it allows the, the newlyweds to relive the magic moments of their union. So that's kind of a cool thing. Involvement, multiple senses, and emotional impact and appeal that's kind of cool.
Now, there's another sense that, is, uh, that we, we haven't talked about, and that's a sense of humor. And so humor is kind of important and kind of useful in actually creating engagement in a message. This is by Rap Collins from uh, Bogota in Colombia, and it's a piece for a dermal patch that's a weight loss patch. Now, we all know no one really actually wants to, we, have, we all want to lose weight, but we don't actually want to work out. Right? We want to melt away the pounds. So the patch is a perfect solution, right? I want, I want one of those. I want many of them. So when you can create involvement that actually underscores the underlying benefit of what you're offering, then you create a very powerful message. So here you see there's a perf tab, and it allows you to open up the package. You simply tear off the love handle, demonstrating that this is the final effect. Once you've actually worn these things for a while, you lose these wonderful little things that people love to hold on to. And uh, so, you know, very simple, die cut, very effective in communicating the benefit. Another thing by Rap from uh, the same group, I think they're, they're very creative down there. Um, this is a self-promotion piece, and it's there to demonstrate their ability to make brands stick in the minds of consumers. And it's printed on adhesive paper. When you take the, the backing off of it, it actually sticks to your hand, and you can't really get rid of it effectively. So, you know, kind of dramatizing that benefit. I thought that was kind of cool. This is a fundraising piece from the US. It won an Echo Award recently for gene therapy. And the letter is actually personalized, embroidered onto a sheet of denim, and is mailed out with a CD over here and a sewing kit. And the idea is to get people to wear jeans to work. What a novel idea in the advertising business, right? I mean, that really stands out. Well, I guess if you're in banking, then it's kind of a, a, a bold statement. But the involvement device is over here. This sewing kit allows you to take this patch and fix it onto your jeans and demonstrate your support for the, the piece. And they did very well from a results point of view. Again, demonstrating the power of the, of the, the product itself, this uh, Fiskars uh, package was actually die cut directly into the sheet. There's no printing involved. But uh, what you see is they're demonstrating the ability or the precision of the scissors to actually uh, cut very detailed stuff out of a sheet of paper. So that worked very well, won a bunch of awards and a lot of uh, success. Gray Advertising in Vancouver did a great piece for uh, the sound studio, which is GGRP. And you may have seen this uh, on the web. It's a, uh, a vinyl recording. And of course, sending out vintage vinyl is cool. Everyone thinks vinyl is really cool and vintage is really cool these days. The problem is no one has a record player to listen to what's on there. So they actually built one in. Talk about innovation. There's the phonograph record over here. Phonograph record? Oh. I feel old all of a sudden. And uh, the cardboard from the, the envelope actually serves as a resonating board and allows you to hear it. All you have to do is put the pencil in and turn this around, and all of a sudden you can hear the, uh, the music and the message, which is kind of cool. Now, video. Uh, was anyone here for the session yesterday from the guy from YouTube? Right? Really great presentation. Video strategy, very important. If you have a brand, you want to have a video strategy involved. And of course, you can link from a physical piece to video using uh, personalized URLs and QR codes and web keys and, and any number of devices. But you can also integrate video directly into your message now. And that's a wonderful thing. This is a piece by Accenture that was sent to Canada Post. Um, I think the purpose was to, uh, to highlight the 20 years of the relationship. And what you see on the right-hand side over here is an actual flat-screen LCD uh, screen, right? That has uh, pre-recorded video and music and so on. And so you can actually project or play uh, a video message directly in a direct mail piece, which is kind of cool. So from a creativity point of view, definitely direct mail is far from dead. And uh, you know, Adobe said it very well and used direct mail for this piece, which proclaims that print is not dead, and so is, neither is direct mail.